settle in and see if we're all set for the virtual world as well. All right. Okay, so we're doing things slightly different in August just to, you know, keep, keep you on your toes. And uh, uh, so we're using the prayer for protection to set the tone for the service and then carry even more of that out. So our, uh, our prayer to center us and start the service, I invite you to all join in together and let us say, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, love is, peace is, light is, God is, and all is well. And so it is. So uh, I invite you to stand up if you feel like it, and uh, Maria is going to lead us in the song. Good morning. Good morning. And I'm going to defer to Jim over here to bring me in whenever we need to come in. I see joy. I see peace. I see goodness surrounding me. I see love in every breath I breathe. I see God in everything. I see happiness. I see freedom. I see the beauty that lives in me. I see perfection in what life brings. I see God in everything. I feel joy. I feel peace. I feel goodness surrounding me. I feel love in every breath I breathe. I breathe God in everything. I feel happiness. I feel freedom. I feel the beauty that lives in me. I feel perfection in what life brings. I feel God in everything. I choose joy, I choose peace, I choose goodness surrounding me, I choose love in every breath I breathe, I choose God in everything, I see choose happiness, I choose freedom, I choose beauty that lives in me, I choose perfection in what life brings, I choose God in everything, I know joy, I know peace, I know goodness surrounding Thank you guys for supporting me in that. And I invite you to have a seat if it feels comfortable to do so. And take a look at a neighbor. And those of you at home know that we're taking this, uh, talk, saying this to you as well, and we invite you uh, while, you're, while we're having this conversation to like, um, and somebody's waving at me, am I doing something wrong? Type it, type it into the comments. Type this comment. That's just a video. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, feel free to type in the comments what we're getting ready to say. Like, love, share, do everything you need to do to share this uh, loving spiritual community. To look at a neighbor. Good morning. Good morning. I love you this morning. I love you this morning. And I sure do appreciate you being here. Now join me in reading the affirmations. I decide to call it all good and then enjoy all the good that surrounds me. I am the doer of good deeds with vigor and efficiency. Now I'm going to invite you to call into your mind or heart or wherever you choose to bring it. Heart is more powerful something that you want to draw into your life. So the, uh, for anybody who's not familiar with the Mastermind Prayer, this is about clearing your mind and heart and thoughts and drawing into your life what you're choosing to draw in. And I invite you to read this with me. 
I surrender. I admit that of myself, I am powerless to solve my problems, powerless to improve my life. I need help. I believe, I believe that a power greater than myself, God, the one presence and one power active in the universe can change my life. I am ready to be changed. I realize that erroneous, self-defeating thinking is the cause of my problems, unhappiness, fears, and failures. I decide to be changed. I make the decision to surrender my will and my life to the divine creator. I am willing to be changed at depth. I am willing to place my life under the direction of God and to remain open to divine will. I understand and forgive. Oops, and I forgive. I understand that self-empowering thoughts and courageous actions prosper me now. I now, whoops, we weren't finished with that one. I now forgive myself and all others for all real and imagined mistakes and shortcomings. I ask believing in the awareness of my oneness with God. I ask believing that my heart's desire is fulfilled now. I state my specific requests knowing that God is fulfilling my needs. My request is, bring it into your mind. I claim, I claim my heart's desire and I affirm that I am now demonstrating it in my life. I give thanks. I give thanks that God is now responding to my needs and I joyously assume the very feelings of my heart's desire fulfilled. I dedicate my life. I now have a covenant in which it is agreed that I am supplied with an abundance of all things necessary to live a successful and joyous life. I dedicate myself to be of maximum service to God, to live in a manner that sets the highest example for others to follow, and to remain responsive to God's guidance. I go forth with spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, and gratitude and expectancy. I am peace. I am content. Amen. Good morning. Nana will bring up our prayer box now, and if you're not familiar with the prayer box, if you put something in that prayer box and you pray for it, you can let it go after that because it's done. Prayer works, so let's do it together now. I invite you to think of someone or something you'd like to send some love to as we pray together. You are divine. You are the divine essence of God. You take with you every power all 12 powers wisdom order love faith all of those and you use them in a way that makes you live your highest best life today we pray for our loved ones carol velez Bo terrarin jim schnafel Sharon and Barry Curtis, Amy and Kip Shaw and family, Shirley White, Natty, Nancy Cataquit Eduardo, Itata Selassie, 
Barbara Slatt, Delissa Gale. Together, let us affirm that these loved ones are whole, perfect, and complete. We are standing with them knowing that God is already actively working in partnership with each person to grow through the appearance of challenges. Wherever we are, God is, and together all is well. And where we are is with God all day, every day. But right now we're there in a more concentrated way on purpose. Ah. <sighs> Just breathing into the moment, giving thanks for these loved ones that we read the names of, giving thanks that their needs are met, and in that moment also giving thanks that our needs are met. That as we take this time to fulfill ourselves, to tap off as one might say, to fill up, we have more to give back out into the world by taking this time, by connecting, by saying yes to the God part of ourselves and letting it be expressed out into our life and our world and our affairs. <sighs> Life is good. Life is good. Life is good. That is my claim. I claim that into my life. We claim that into our lives. By acknowledging it, we get to celebrate it more in the experience. And so with that, ah, just take in a good breath and then let it go. And let that smile come on the other side of it. Just a bigger smile than what maybe happened naturally because you have the power to do it on purpose. And you have the power to claim for yourself right now that I let it be well, I let it be so, and so it is, and amen. Ah, so um, I'm going to take one of the announcements away from you and just tell you all about my class again. So um, uh, we are doing this month these uh, calls to action by Jesus or the calls to action by the Christ within us. And, uh, and so one of the ways we're doing that is uh, on the Sunday service, we've got 20 minutes to look at the lesson and get as much out of it as we can. And then on Tuesday, we do a deeper dive and look at the Bible metaphysics of it uh, from 6.30 to 8. And we're doing that here in person upstairs on the second floor, or uh, you can, uh, can join us on Zoom as well. And so... Uh, I invite you can if you only have one Tuesday available and you want to check us out, you can come to just the one or you can come to the other three. If you miss the first one, it doesn't matter. Like you can get whatever little bit you can get will will benefit you in whatever way you allow it to. We'll put it that way. All right. And here's Maria with the rest of the announcements. The rest of the story. <laughs> So I know our uh, ushers are so efficient that if you are a first-time visitor or haven't been here in a while, they've probably already given you that package. So let me just follow up by saying that we invite you to fill out the comment card so that we can stay connected with you if you received one of those packages. And then Wally already gave his announcement. That was number two. Number three, <laughs> we have a board meeting coming up uh, August 15th at 630, and that will be via Zoom only. I understand they're very exciting, so we invite you all to join us. <laughs> it's what, Pat? Check us out. Check us out. Check us out. That's right. Uh, tomorrow night. And we will be having a movie outing this Friday evening, August 19th. Um, oh, and wait a minute. Wally's going to uh, step on my toes again. Yeah, I know.
steps up. Uh, Gayla texted me like five minutes before church started. She was going to, this is kind of a project she's doing. And she woke up with a cough. So she decided not to come here and to join us virtually. But so she asked me to put a sign up sheet back there of anybody that's interested in going to a movie together this coming Friday night. If you'll sign up and give her your number to text you or an email to email you so that she can get a consensus of what everybody wants to see. Uh, I can tell you that Diane Keaton has a movie out that looks good that I think would be good for us, but that's just my vote. Um, and uh, so anyway, so there's a sign-up sheet back there for that, as well as the other sign-up sheets that Maria will finish telling you about. So Gayla has done a phenomenal job. We've, you know, when when we have done um, the surveys here, people were asking for more community. So Gayla's doing this. She's creating an opportunity for us to have more community. So please support the requests that you all put out there and come uh, be in community with us. Next Sunday, we're going to have a book bag blessing at the end of service. This is for students, teachers, and school staff of all ages. We'll invite all of the school peeps up front for a blessing. Guided meditation, yogic medley, August 17th at 6.30. This is gonna be via Zoom only. Yogi Medley, Yogic Medley, um, open with oneness, mula mantra, and silence, a guided meditation, and discuss experiences plus yoga prep techniques. I should probably be involved in that. EFT Tapping, Breaking Through the Fear of Success with Ellie McFalls, August 24th, 6.30, Zoom only. The last Sunday of August is Membership Sunday. We will honor our newest members, our established members, and invite anyone who is interested in being a member to join. And there are sign-up sheets in the back for all of our opportunities to be part of community, so it's not required that you sign up, but it does help our facilitators if you sign up so that they can be a little more prepared. And uh, if you're joining us virtually, Throw it in the comments or send an email to info at unityingreensboro.org. And now we're going to be blessed with special music by the John and Candy Band, which is made up of Reverend John Connor and Candy Bartling Connor, who is studying to be a licensed Unity teacher. They have performed at several Unity churches and also play acoustic songs from the 70s as well as standards as at music venues around the triad and in Texas. It's quite a span. So, well, help me in jo uh, welcoming John and Candy Van. Oh, we're so glad to be here. It's always such a welcoming environment and such a wonderful way to spend a Sunday. Uh, this first song is uh, about those times when you're not really feeling the divine. It's always there. But sometimes it's harder to feel that presence. And so just acknowledging that, that just showing up is all you need to do, and that you are right where you need to be, right when you need to be there.
hear my voice. Hear my voice. You are not alone. Hear my voice. Hear my voice. Know, know that, that you're enough. enough. Hear my voice. Hear my voice. Love, Love brings sweet relief. Doubt aside, hear my voice, hear my voice, and, and with love abide. You are here, you are here, you're moving forward in faith. Take this cup. And rest here with me. Take this cup. Take this cup. All will be well. Bask in love. In love. Bask in joy. In joy. Bask in peace. peace. We're moving forward. and music by Candy Bartling Connor. Hello. There we go. Hey, so while they're setting up, um, what we're doing that we did it last week, uh, we're going to do it every Sunday in August. Uh, we're leading up to World Day of Prayer, which is early September. I think it's like the 7th or 8th or something like that. A uh, 7th and, uh, and 8th. World Days of Prayer is the correct pronunciation of that. But anyway, so we also... Uh, realize that our chaplains are here every Sunday and they let you know that they're available to pray with you after service and really nobody was utilizing that. So we wanted to give you samples of what that looks like when you have something that you want to pray on. And it, it can be something big, but it can also be like, hey, you know, I'm not sure how today's going. Can you just, can you help me affirm, can do anything? And so there's always a prayer chaplain with the white um, stole on, but uh, also, it, the, you know, the whole chaplain team is Kathy and Anita and Charlotte and Rod and me and, and Nana will pray with you as well. So anybody that you want some prayer work with, and there's a beautiful room across the hall that they'll do prayers with. And so uh, here is a sample of, of how uh, prayer request and prayer may go. Okay. Um, can, can, I, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I'm wired for sound now. Uh, there could not have been a more perfect song for what we're getting ready to do. Um, when we decided to do this, we wanted to demonstrate how we pray, but none of these prayers are made up. These prayers are real. Kathy's a real person, and her sister-in-law is who I'm going to be praying for. She's going to tell us what she wants to pray for first. Yeah. Um, Anita, I thought I needed some reassurance with this, and um, I have faith in prayer, and um, I really come to you to uh, give me some new thoughts and some, uh, some uh, inner strength for this. Um, my sister-in-law, Doris, uh, lives in Florida. She's having a tooth implant. And you know, that requires a lot of drilling and other kinds of things. And she's having to go under general anesthetic uh, for this. She's not always done well with, with that uh, medication in her body. So I have concerns um, that um, 
I would like to have some reassurance with. Okay. And, so what I hear you saying is Doris is having some dental surgery and you're feeling like you might need a little reassurance and so let's right. hold hands and, and let's invite Doris into the circle of prayer because we are praying for her and no matter if she knows we're praying for her or could hear us, certainly she can feel our love coming towards her. And I invite everyone in this room to join in this prayer that we pray for Doris, who's having dental surgery. This is Kathy's sister-in-law. Remembering that we're all one with God, we know Doris, too, is one with God. We pray for skilled, competent, compassionate caregivers for Doris. We pray for a perfect surgery. Just because in the past, things haven't worked out. We know that this time it will be better. She will feel our love coming to her. She will know that all is well and she'll walk in faith just like you will walk in faith, Kathy, knowing that everything will go as planned in divine order. We hold Doris in the light and we know that this will be complete healing for her. We see everyone surrounding her realizing that Doris is somebody's favorite sister-in-law. And we invite them into the circle prayer to treat her with all the love and compassion that her loved ones would treat her with if they were there. God is over this situation. God is in every person involved in this. We invite everyone here to take a breath and think of Doris, to reassure Kathy that everything is going to be fine. Everything is in divine order, and so it is. Thank you, Anita. That, that's reassuring, and I'll keep, keep that in mind, keep my, in my heart. Okay. Thank you. It's fine. I don't need it. I don't need no mic stand. Um, all right. So, um, yeah, I hope you all enjoyed that and you'll uh, utilize the prayer work. You know, it, it really all comes back to, to prayer in whatever way makes you comfortable. Like, you know, you can do the traditional hop on those knees and pray. And sometimes, like, like that works. Like, even if conservative people do it. It still works, right? Um, and uh, Or you can just do whatever works for you. You can sit where you are. You can take a walk and walk it out and talk it out and sing it out. I was singing when Anita said something about let go and let God. Like there's a song we used to sing in my choir that I can't remember most of the words to. But see, you don't even need all the words. You don't need any of the words. But like all I could remember in my head that was still giving me a pump up that helps you release was I was like going, let go and let God. No, 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 no. Let go, let go and let God. And see, I, you know, I don't need the rest of the words. I can kind of dance around. And as I'm doing that, I'm releasing. You're just imagining it just kind of shedding off of you, you know. Let it go. Let God. Let, and, and, and knowing the whole time what we teach and maybe remind yourself, because when you use the word God enough, it starts to sound like this other separate individual. And it's like, no, there's this power in you that we call God that you can let and let it happen that through that and that power and that is a hundred percent of what we're talking about today even though none of that is in my notes um so um our uh our second sunday of the second call to action is pick up your bed and walk right uh but it's like you should start by picking it up you know this man supposedly was laying there for 38 years not even standing so it's like you know if he can get up and pick it up like that's a major shift right and then walk but um so all of that is in the book of john that we're looking at but 
there's, it's, it's told in a shorter and different way in Matthew that I think helps explain what we're then going to look at metaphysically in the, in the John version. So in Matthew 9, 1 through 9, it says this. It says, Jesus stepped into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own town. Some men brought him to a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Your, your missing the mark is forgiven, right? Um, at this point, some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, this fellow is blaspheming. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, why do you entertain evil thoughts in your heart? Which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven or to say get up and walk? But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Missing the marks. Uh, so he said to the paralyzed man, get up, take your mat, and go home. Then the man got up and went home, and the crowd saw this, and they were filled with awe, and they praised God who had given them authority. So when we're saying pick up the bed and walk, what it says right there before you get into the metaphysics is it's saying let go and let God is what it's saying. It's saying, forgive yourself. Stop holding yourself hostage to negative opinions that you've allowed to come in and those judgments. You know, I, I had this thought um, earlier this week uh, when I was mowing. That's a good time to think because you're not doing anything but walking, you know, and, um, and, and about uh, claiming the title of rich. See, you can f be, you can wake up happy and you can know that everybody you're see you're filled filled with this world of people that you love that you get to see and you get to talk to and like the majority of your day is happy and you can call that rich until you say well no because the bank account is not what anybody would call rich and then there's the thing because are you going to make your own decisions and claim your own good and let it grow from there? Or are you going to hold yourself back by what somebody else might define by the word? It's your word. It's your life. You get to do it as it is. And believe me, some of the people that only would judge the word rich by the amount of money in their bank account ain't having happy days. Like plenty of them are not because they've gotten so caught up into only one definition that it becomes like this weight that you're trying to meet up to, right? And so if you like, if you first label rich by how happy you are, the like all the other material stuff flows in way easier because you let, you've let the resistance go of it. You've opened the door up for the flow to happen just simply by finding a way to keep yourself in a happy place as often as possible. That wasn't in my notes either. So let's go to my notes. Um, so the story, most of you have probably heard this. So I'm just going to paraphrase. Jesus goes to Jerusalem uh, to a Jewish festival. And all of that becomes important when we look at the metaphysics of it. Um, and there's this pool at a place called uh, Sheep's Gate. And this man is laying there and and this is a place where people come to get in the water when the water stirs up they go get in the water and get healed right and it said that this man is laying on this mat near the pool but he hadn't got there and apparently he's been laying there for 38 years that's when you know that that this is what you call um a parable because <laughs> because he's not been laying there for 38 years but um I don't know, maybe he was. I, I, let me not lie on the man. Anyway, so 38 years, right? And Jesus walks up to him and it says, um, he just said, do you want to get well? And then the man starts giving his excuses. Well, you know, I've been laying here this whole time and every time the water stirs, I don't have anybody to help get me in the pool. And, and then the other people step over me and trip over me and then they get in there and then they get the good and then it stops stirring and then I'm still here and I don't get the healing, right? And then Jesus just said, pick up your bed and walk, right? Or he said, pick up your mat, I guess is what it says in English now here, but I like bed better and that's what I heard first. There's also a song I used to sing to that, but I don't remember the words of that one either. Um, and uh, 
As soon as he said it, it says the man was cured and he picked up his bed and, and he walked off, right? And then it says that, um, you know, one of those teachers stopped him and said, it's the Sabbath. You're not supposed to be carrying a bed on the Sabbath. And he said, oh, that man that healed me told me to pick up my bed and walk. So I did. And they were like, what man? And they turned and Jesus was gone into the crowd, right? And, uh, and then Jesus later ran into the man later that day, I think, or sometime, um, and the temple. And he said to him, uh, see, you are doing well. Stop sinning or something worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders uh, that Jesus was who had made him well. So there's like the basic story. He didn't even ask him, do you want me to heal you? Or there was no, mat, you know, no even touching. There wasn't even a touching of the garment. He he just said, do you want to get well? The man started giving excuses why he couldn't get well. And then like in modern day slang, he said, boy, get up and get out of here. You know, stop, stop with your excuses. Get up and go. Just get out. You're in the way right now. Go. Get up and go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Right. And, and then it was just released. That wasn't some magic trick. And it wasn't even, Jesus didn't even heal the man. He didn't touch him. He didn't do anything. All he did was let him know, you don't have to do this. Get up, go. And the power of the healing, the health that was already fully existent, reared its head and released and went. Now that's all just looking at the basic teachings and you know what I call the physical part of it, right? So if I replace... All the biblical names and, and some of the places with the metaphysical definitions, here's how just the first paragraph, the first six verses sounds. It says, uh, the I am in me went to a place of peace for a spiritual celebration. Now, in that place of peace, near the channel through which pure, innocent life flows, a cleansing happened at, with the realization that our life is being constantly purified, healed, and made new by the activity of mind. See, I emphasized that and then lost my place. Uh, and it is surrounded by like, like sturdy, covered shelter and protection. Now, the divine thought which has been in need of, of a way to find equilibrium is then ask, do you want to get well? And that question gives the equilibrium and immediately he's able to get up and move along. We're now talking about, when it's talking about man, uh, metaphysically means a divine thought, a divine idea. And that's not linked just to physical men and not women. It's um, actually, oh, we're all in trouble. I forgot to hit the start button. Um, uh, <laughs> um, it's, here, here's the one thing on that. We were talking, there's a, a little video uh, where the conversation came up when we were doing life lessons from Reverend Della uh, on Zoom. And there's a class that she used to teach called I Am Woman Designed by God. And, um, and I never, I found out more on July 6th than I've ever known because men were not allowed to come to the class. It was just for women. But what came from that conversation and what came to me in thinking about presenting that the word man in Bible terms always means divine ideas is women are still more unique because man is a term that we use often when we're just saying humans. We're like, well, you know, mankind. That doesn't just mean the males of the world. It means humans, mankind. So that's all of us. You're all having divine thoughts and you are a divine thought. You are the divine thought of God in expression. You were pressed out of the idea from the divine. And then now you also are a co-creator, so you get to press out more divine ideas into the world. And that is what this is talking about. That is saying that we get these ideas, and it says that around the pool that there are people, which are divine ideas, that are people that are lying there blind, lame, and paralyzed, not able to see the truth, 
not feeling able to move well in it or not being able to move in it at all. And those are the limitations that we put on our, we get these ideas and then we say, well, I can't do that because it falls in the two category, two, T-O-O. It's, uh, it's too far out of the realm of my experience. Um, it's too expensive. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I'm too, 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 too. And you, when you release the twos, then you free yourself up to allow, you release the limitation and say, you know what? I have no idea how this could be expressed, but I accept that if it keeps nudging on me, it's not just some passing idea I had one day and then never thought about it again. It's this thing that nudged me and then I said no. I made it one of the lames laying there by the pool waiting to get cleansed so it can get back going again. And, and then it keeps nudging for 38 years. I looked up, I'm, I'm not a numerology expert. I actually haven't studied it almost at all. But I looked it up. I, uh, the, the world of Google told me that um, 38 means the need to find equilibrium. So like often you'll see the, the, the number 40, 40 days, 40 years, 40. And, and when I looked all that up in Jewish tradition, the 40 was often used just to say a long time a really long time. And we all know that sometimes we're like, well, how long did that thing last? And you're like, well, it seemed like at least an hour, but it was probably about 30 seconds, you know, but in the moment of it, it seemed so long, right? So it can become a 40, even if it's 30 seconds. So I was first thinking in those terms, but when I was like, let's look at the numerology on that. It also said that this pool where the cleansing happens was surrounded by these uh, covered colonnades which are pillars, right? And I looked up the metaphysics on that and it wasn't even mentioned, you know. They had something about pillars, but not colonnades, even though that's the word that was used here. But when I Googled, you know, the other place that pillars are used are within the Islamic tradition. And so I thought that was interesting to look at. These five pillars that surround yours can represent, and it does for Islam, the declaration of faith, prayer, almsgiving, which is the giving of food and money to the poor, fasting and pilgrimage, constitute the basic norms of Islamic practice. They are accepted by Muslims globally, irrespective of ethnic, regional, and sectarian differences. So I thought that was interesting that we, you know, we can jump in right on that too. And I, I mean, we, look, we say all the time that we accept all pathways to God. I started saying something to someone once about like, well, what we teach in unity is da 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 And they said, well, I thought we accepted all pathways. I'm like, we do. We respect and accept everybody's pathway. We just happen to teach one specific route, but we don't believe our one specific route we're teaching is the only way to get there. Like whatever you feel good about in the moment. So if you can find another tradition like that, that helps support all oh, this place where I'm going, how do I get there? Let me surround myself with faith faith and prayer and giving and fasting. You can do the food fast if you want. I'm only going to ever do that when a doctor makes me, but um, you can do it as often as you like. But I will often fast from negative ideas or negative experiences or worry or all that stuff, right? Yesterday when I was in that building, I keep telling you all about, we're doing cleaning up stuff and I hadn't had a whole, I got this one guy that keeps calling me, but he wants to buy it for a lot less than I want to sell it for. And, um, and I hadn't heard from him since the last time I gave him a number and then, and I, but I'm in there and I'm like, all right, father and mom and daddy, you know, who are on the other side, I need y'all to let me know what it is I need to do. I need you to stir up. And, and within the hour, that guy showed up with his wife because he saw that we were there and he wanted to look inside the building. And then when I was cleaning up a little bit more, uh, a guy who runs a dry cleaners in Reedsville drove by because he's interested in renting, you know. So it's like people showed up just by being there for that, just by saying, you know what, I, and I don't have the answer yet. Uh, neither one of them want to pay as much as I want yet either. So, um, you know, we'll see. But it's in the releasing, I had an expression 
of, of the request almost immediately. And it doesn't, look, we're in a time and a world where we want immediate gratification, but we've held stuff back and given so many reasons why they can't happen that we often need to take some time to do the releasing so that we free up for that expression. So this call to action is to allow your divine ideas to express, to accept that you are a powerful creator and that you have the power to create. And then if you say, well, I'd like to do that, but so-and-so down the street is in my way. So-and-so down the street is not in charge of your power of your creation. So release that. That uh, mastermind prayer that we did today is a wonderful, beautiful exercise in the releasing of it. It's, it's the perfect what we teach about denials and affirmations. So when you say, I need help, that of myself, I can not do this, you're not saying, I can't do this. You're saying, I'm bringing up the spiritual nature of me, and I'm going to stop trying to do this just in my human experience because I've got this power in me that can overcome all the excuses. And so check that out. If you need that in writing, I know we printed it at some point. I can email that to you or we'll print it up and give it to you next week. It's also on YouTube just as its own video. You can just pull that up. Uh, Bill's reading the one on the video that we've got. And you can just go over it and let it run and then do it again if you need to. And do it again if you need to. And claim it until you see it and accept it. And that final verse of the, I can pull that up. I got it right here. Um, I think the most powerful part is the I go forth with the spirit of enthusiasm, excitement, gratitude, and expectancy. You use those four things, you can change your world to the better and the better and the better. It's getting better every day. How are you doing today? I'm better than I was yesterday. Well, I thought you were good yesterday. I was. I'm better today. So... Know that you can claim that all day, every day, and tomorrow, and the day after, too. I love you. I bless you. I behold the Christ in you, and thank you for being here today. So, and if you want to talk even more about all this Tuesday night, join us in class. We're actually going to look uh, at the rest of, of that chapter of John. Like there's other stuff that it turns out that's kind of the intro to even more of a call to action. So we'll look at all that. But uh, for now, it, it's our time to give our tithes and our love offerings. If you give that electronically, if you're watching us uh, virtually, I invite you to hit the donate button and uh, thank you in advance. Um, but I invite you to either place your hands out offering or place your hands on your heart uh, because the power is within you to send that energy out. Let us all say this together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and I am grateful. And then let us sing this together. Thank you, God, for Give us some more music. And now we'd like to give thanks for these gifts given to our church. I was going to say what he had said, but anyway, we go forth with enthusiasm, with zeal, with faith, knowing that all is well. 
We give thanks for these gifts given to our church, the attendance of the people, the love in this room. We take our love out into the world and show our best, highest self to the world to inspire other people to be that too. And so it is. So, um, lovely, lovely message and, and prayers Thank today. You. And um, the, song, the song that we're going to do, uh, I was thinking that we, you, can make, uh, your, you can make your week's um, affirmation out of this song. And it's just going to be four words. I am feeling groovy. <laughs> <laughs> and and sing along because you know it. sing along with this. And, Slow down, you move too fast You got to make the morning last Just kicking down the cobblestones Looking for fun and feeling groovy da -da 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 -da. Feeling groovy Hello, lamppost, what you knowin'? I've come to watch your flowers growin'. Ain't you got no rhymes for me? Doodin' doo-doo, feelin' groovy. ba da 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 feelin' groovy. got no deeds to do, no promises to keep. I'm dappled and drowsy and ready to sleep. Let the morning time drop all its petals on me. Life, I love you, all is groovy. Ba -da 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 -da. Feeling groovy. Y'all are doing great. Yeah. Hello, lamppost, what you knowin'? I come to watch your flowers growin'. Ain't you got no rhymes for me? Do do do, feelin' groovy. Ba da 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 da, -da. feelin' groovy. I got no deeds to do, no promises to keep. I'm dappled and drowsy and ready to sleep. Let the morning time drop all its petals on me. Life, I love you. All is groovy. Ba da 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 da. Feeling groovy. Feeling groovy. Yes. Thank you. You all are wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> you feeling today? Groovy. I am groovy. I love it. That, that will happily be my affirmation for the week. Um, all right. Several things to tell you about real quick on things that are coming up. But um, 
The Presbyterian Church is planning to have an ice cream social in here the last Sunday of the month, and they've invited us all to join them. It would be an hour after our service is done. So you could maybe pop in and check out Mark a little bit after here, or um, or help, maybe we'll do some setup. That's also going to be our membership day. So maybe we can already you know add a cake to it and maybe even start eating some cake before they get here. Um, and... Uh, also, uh, you're, we're going to be taking part in Greensboro Pride on September the, I think, 18th or whatever that date is. Uh, Miranda is collecting uh, books for kids that are LGBT friendly. And so there's a box in the back for that if you want to bring stuff in for that. Uh, the Presbyterian Church is also uh, collecting stuff for the Spartan Pantry. And they're apparently in need of toiletry items and that sort of thing. They're going to have boxes here so you can bring stuff in the next you know, couple of Sundays and add to that as well for that collection. Um, that is it for the additional stuff. So tomorrow night, exciting board meeting if you wanted to join. What's that? I, we're not there yet. Um, <laughs> uh, so exciting board meeting on Zoom tomorrow night, 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, Tuesday night, uh, my class, you can either be with us upstairs or uh, join us on Zoom if like, People who have already come in person know that they only want to do Zoom. If nobody's coming in person, then I don't need to be here by myself. So please let me know if you don't want to come in person. But if you do, I'm very happy to do it. And I figured out how to do it this week. So uh, Tuesday night that. Wednesday night, guided meditation, 6.30 to 7.30-ish. Uh, probably not quite all the way to 7.30 uh, with Rod. And then next week, our next call to action is let your nets down. And uh, the Bridge Quartet uh, will be here led by Tal, who is back there with us today. Um, okay, that's it. Uh, so if you want to pray with Anita or anybody else that's in here, Charlotte, Kathy, Nana, me, uh, let us know. We can pray across the hall. We can find a little spot to be private and affirmative. So um, with that, let us sing the peace song and then go about having a wonderful day on purpose. Have a great world, world on purpose, and, and thank you for setting the tone with the prayer for protection before service, and know that wherever you are, God is, and so it is. Mm -hmm.